Hello everyone, welcome to the seventh video to a beginner's guide on how to Revit. In our previous video, I never did explain why modelers or designers use a CAD as their guide. The reason for this is we want to maintain a connection between the file and the model. So, we use the CAD as an underlay and even include it in the construction documentation set. Now, we never really did some checks on our CAD link if it's accurate to the scale of our model nor did I explain its parameters. So, here in the draw layer, click this one. Always make sure to have this in background. No idea why Revit didn't make foreground as a default, but if this was still in background, it would be behind our models and elements, so it would be very difficult to use it as our guide, nor even select it. So, let's focus on the grid in the CAD link. And let's do an align dimension. As you see here, it's 16,000. Here, it's also 16,000, but let's check the decimal. It's zero. So now, let's check the other grids. 11,500. Remember I told you something about witness line when using dimension lines? If you were to use a witness line here, the value becomes a value. It doesn't tell us a number. So that's why we have to use dimension line separately, like so. So in this way, we can see the value. So let's do the vertical one. Okay, everything matches. All right, everything is good. So next, we align the CAD link grid to the Revit grid. Let's make this longer first. Align A to CAD A and Revit 1 to CAD 1. Then let's delete all our dimension. Now the, the CAD link actually only has three grids, so let's delete one. Then the letter grid, it seems that we're lacking some, so let's add more. Once that is done, let's do an align command. Next is the vertical grid. Once that is done, let's temporarily hide our CAD link. Then next is we pin the grid so we won't move them by mistake. So it's pinned. If I move it here, a warning sign will show. Now, Looking here in the status bar, there are a few buttons. Clicking this button actually renders our capability to select and click some elements, especially the pinned ones. So if I were to click this, I cannot click our pinned element anymore. But we can still attach some objects to them, like let's make a wall in section. And if I attach this, see, I can still do that, but I can no longer click it. To reverse, the, to reverse the process, let's click this again, and there we go, I can click it again. So, it's a good practice to make use of these buttons here. Next is this button. 
So as you see, select links, but our CAD link is currently hidden. So let's show it. Here's the CAD link. I can move it, so undo. But if I click this button, like the pinned grid, I can no longer select it. But again, like the grid, I can still align objects to it, as you see. Okay. Now, we will follow the placement of columns and wall as per the drawing link. Some are already properly placed. Now, we will find the placement of columns and wall as per the newly assigned grid and CAD link. Let's hide this first. Let's delete everything from this side. Okay, so as you see, the columns are obviously in the middle of each grid, but let's see the dimension of their column. This is one example of why we were talking about the decimal earlier. So let's just round it off to 900 by 900. Unfortunately, the column we did was not big enough, so let's make a new column. We did 900 by 900, right? So let's click this one, edit type, duplicate. Let's name this one home underscore str for structural 900 by 900. What this warning sign means is that the dimension light we did is no longer in tandem with the new structural column. That's why it's asking us to either remove it or just warn us. So let's just remove it. There, it's gone. Let's look at let's look back in our CAD link. Okay, so does it properly match? It does. So Let's now follow the CAD link. There we go. You see the difference between foreground and background? The CAD is now underneath our element. So it should always be in foreground. But again, it's a personal preference. Okay, this column here looks a bit different, so let's skip that for now. Try to, to select an element going from right to left, just by touching it, you're able to select the object. But if you go from left to right, like this, it will not it will only select the object once it's inside the circle. Sorry, once it is inside the square. Unlike this, it doesn't have to be inside, but as long as it's being touched, it's already selected.
Now let's look at our cat link again. This is not a 900 by 900. Let's check. Okay. All right. It's 900 by 1200. So let's make a new column. There we go. I think all the columns are done. Let's hide it. There's something wrong here. So usually this kind of thing doesn't happen where it's 15 mm from the grid and 14.9 so what we do here is we just align it properly something to add you see how the border is very thick to remove that just click this button right here now that looks better next let's do the walls Let's start with the exterior wall. So the same thing from before, edit type, duplicate. Okay, let's name this home ARC 900 mm. We got to be consistent with our naming. It's a very good practice. So let's just align it to the grid or to the column. OK, so let's just finish the exterior wall. You can also use create similar or CS. there but we missed up some small parts here I apologize for the dead air now align there now we're almost done let's do the architectural wall inside the building this is 450, half of the exterior walls. So of course, since this is an inside wall, the material shouldn't be brick. Let's like let's look for something maybe wood. All right, we we found a wood.
I think we're done. Oh, we forgot the main door wall. I think this is 900. It's 900. If you see something like this, there might, there might be some small misadjustment in the line. So if you encounter this, just round off to 900. Now, once done, let's do a zoom extend, click the CAD, do a copy, go back to floor plan, and click first floor. Next is, we're going to paste this at the same area, but different view, like this. So what this means is, it did a copy paste for us, for us exactly as its coordinate, but on a different level, which is the one above the ground floor. This option is very useful for doing typical models on a typical floor plan. So now, let's go back to ground floor. Let's do a cleanup here in a bit. Let's click the an empty drawing part. Go to extent. Let's double click this one. Highlight everything or hover your mouse. If once you select a line, keep pressing tab until you select all of it. Now delete. Next, let's do a rectangle sketch. Alright, this should be good. Now, over your mouse again, tab, select everything, copy paste. Check. Now, we're done with the ground floor. Let's do the same for first floor. Properties palette. Take these two things. Modify. Select all. Delete. Go back to paste. Align to current view. Check. Do zoom extend. Next is, we untick this. Do the same for ground floor. Zoom extend. Now, as you see, when you try to move into different levels, their positioning are the same. So, this is, this is an example of being consistent, which is a good practice again. So, that's it for this video. Next up, we will do our flooring. For questions and suggestions, please do comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. It will help me a lot. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, guys.